So it's his first time. He's relatively new to the Bay Area, and this, this is big, y'all. So make a lot of noise for Eric Schneider. Thanks, Dixie. Hi, everybody. So I was 11 when I skipped two grades and went to a special Catholic all-boys high school, which meant that I was 15 when I went to college at Caltech. And I was uh, ready at that point to start um, having experiences with girls. But... <laughs> I was two or three years younger than everyone around me, and at that time there were three men for every woman uh, uh, in the student body. And so part of this, uh, this may have had something to do with uh, why I became friends with this guy named Alan, who was uh, an upperclassman who had taken a couple of extra years to graduate, and I thought he was impossibly mature and worldly because he was in his early 20s. And he always seemed to have the sexiest women as his girlfriends, and I thought maybe, you know, some of that will rub off on me, maybe, something like that. So we became friends and bonded over loving science fiction and postmodern philosophy, and he told me, Eric, you have to read this author. His name is uh, Samuel R. Delaney. <laughs> Delaney, uh, some of you guests know, he's America's most famous gay black science fiction writer. And I read a really mind-blowing novel of his. It's called Stars in My Pocket Like Grains of Sand, which is about uh, two men who are each other's perfect erotic match. Uh, but that wasn't, you know, I could sort of go past that at that point. But uh, one thing that happens in the book is they live in a city where an important part of the city is that there are these public parks which are specifically set up for both humans and aliens to go have sex with each other. So you, if you're a male human who likes neuter or male aliens, there's a park for you. And this concept just blew my mind. And then I read his autobiography and found out this is not something that he just made up. It was based on his experiences in the gay cruising scene in New York in the 60s. And I, I'm enviously reading his autobiography where he talks about his typical work day as a writer in the early 60s. Uh, he would get up, make breakfast for his wife, so you're off to work. He'd write for a few hours. Then he'd go down to the subway restroom, have sex with three or five guys, come home, make lunch, write for a few more hours, go out to a nearby park, have sex with three or five guys, uh, come back home, maybe write for a little bit more. His wife would come home, they'd have dinner. Uh, maybe he'd have sex with her. Uh, maybe he'd go out again. On the weekends, he goes down to the docks at Christopher Street or to the bathhouses and he participates in large orgies. And I thought, he's living in this parallel universe where he can just walk out the door and have as much sex as he wants uh, any time he wants, every day. And here I'm this frustrated college student who is having a lot of problems with this. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't all just, you know, meaningless anonymous encounters for him. He also talks about in the cruising scene, he would encounter these men, and he would encounter men of different races, men of different social classes, you know, different nationalities, the types of people that in the daylight world, people would never meet up and make contact, but he would meet these people, have sex, but then he would make some kind of, uh, you know, meaningful connection with them that would last for a short while, but he, he's, he's written that, you know, he thinks this is an important part of public sex that is not often acknowledged. And Delaney is still one of my favorite writers to this day. He's 73 and still writing. So anyway, let's move forward 20 years after college. I'm married. I've moved to the Bay Area. I've become part of the acro yoga scene here. And one, uh, and then last year, one of the members of the community says, hey, I have an idea. Let's all uh, dress up in sexy outfits, go to the Folsom Street Fair, and demonstrate what we do to all the people there. Now, I knew what Folsom was. I know it's a gay leather fair. I had never done anything with men up until this point, but I have this heavy voyeuristic streak in me. And I thought, well, this sounds like fun, and maybe I'll see something interesting if I go. So I'm the kind of person who, when I commit to doing something, I tend to commit to the fullest extent. So, you know, I went down to the hate, got myself a nice mesh t-shirt and some black pleather booty shorts, and dressed up in that, went down to the fair with my friends, thinking, you know, hopefully I'll see some interesting stuff here. And so <laughs> I get there, and 
10 minutes in, after walking to the gate, I see two women in denim up against a fence. They're kissing passionately, and one of them has her hand down the other's pants. And so I realized, okay, I am going to see something interesting here today. <laughs> so I, you know, stand on some people's shoulders, and I have people standing on my hands. I do some basing. I do some flying. We're having a good time. And as things happen, <laughs> things start getting more and more crowded as the day goes on, and eventually it's just this shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder crush of bodies everywhere. And you've got people in leather and in chains and in rope and in rubber. And I realize, hey, you know, it's kind of like I've wandered into this strange park filled with fantastic creatures who all want to have sex with each other. <laughs> and, you know, occasionally I get separated from my friends and I'm moving through the crowd. And if you've been there, you know, you know, it's this crush of the crowd, but occasionally this little pocket will open up where there'll be something happening, like, oh, it's three guys who are playing with each other's dicks. Or, oh, here's someone on his knees sucking off his friend. And, you know, I'm trying to play it cool, because I know that's what you're supposed to do. You know, don't, don't gawk and stare too much. But, you know, it's kind of hard when, you know, this is the first time you're like, wow, that guy's getting sucked off right in the middle of the street. So the day goes on, and... Uh, you know, I'm having a good time with my friends, but eventually we split up to do our own thing and the things start to thin out. And I've been kind of infected by the energy of the place. And I'm like, okay, you know, let's take this a step further here. You know, maybe I can do some things that I've never done before. So if you've been to Folsom, you know that guys tend to stand along the side of the street up against the walls of the buildings with very little clothing on, masturbating all day as people go walking by. <laughs> so I... <sighs> took a deep breath and spotted one guy who seemed pretty good looking, wearing the leather cap and vest and no pants, sitting there playing with himself. So I go up to him and I say hello and I sort of lean in and I'm like, do you need any help with that? <laughs> and he says, knock yourself out. <laughs> so. Now I'm in this situation, I've never done this before, but you know, I've done this with myself, so I'm like, okay, what I know that works, all right, so let's you know, take kind of a firm grip on this, and he had helpfully oiled it up already. And you know, when you get over the head, give it a little twist, and uh, you know, keep that up, make a good rhythm. And after a little while, I sort of leaned in and said, so is this good for you? And he's like, yeah, that's great. And I say, so you know, I've never, never touched a guy like this before, and he says, Happy Folsom. <laughs> so I go on to repeat this about four or five more times with other guys. <laughs> and and uh, you know, uh, they're good sports. Uh, Quite a few of them, you know, a few of them say, I, I go in and I more or less use the same line, you need any help with that? Many of them says, no, I've got, I'm, I've got it under control, thanks very much, but thank you for asking. You know, you're very attractive, but, you know, I'm all right. Others, uh, let me go for it. So, uh, so this went on for a little bit of while, a little while, I'm excited. Uh, so at one point, I'm crossing the intersection at 9th and Folsom, because things are really beginning to thin out, people are starting to leave. And then these two guys, they've got on like flannel shirts and baseball hats and denim shorts, and one of them's got his pants down uh, around his knees, and his friend's holding him and says, hey, who wants to come suck this guy's dick? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, here's my opportunity. <laughs> so, so I head on over and uh, say, I'll do that, and so... Squat down in front of the guy, and I'm trying to remember, okay, what have I read about this? All right. <laughs> Don't use your teeth. And, okay, you know, I'm a yoga practitioner, so I know how to breathe through my nose, so that's not a problem. <laughs> so I'm going at this. I've got this guy's dick. It's a nice size. It fills up my mouth. I'm not choking. And after, a, you know, a little bit of this, I hear a, a guy yell, hey, look, that guy over there is sucking that guy's dick right out in the middle of the street. And I realized, wait, I've become that guy. <laughs> so anyway, so that happened. And uh, 
So things are really starting to end. It's about six people are leaving. And I decide, well, I've seen these flyers around saying that the official play space of the fair is this club called Blow Buddies. Some of you may have heard of it. It's on Harrison Street. Uh, it's a classic gay sex club. Uh, you go in, it's very dark, there's music playing. It's got one area that has like this pit with a ledge around it and uh, you know, thing walling it off and glory holes so that people can stand in the upper part, people down in the lower part can suck them off. Uh, you've got these booths if you want privacy, but they all have a, a hole at the eye level and a hole at the crotch level so you can take a peek in. Uh, there's like a maze where you can wander around and you might, you know, come around the corner and look, oh, it's four guys who are all fooling around. So, you know, I go in and, uh, you know, pay my 25 bucks, sign some forms and become a card-carrying member of a club I had no idea would ever have me as a member. <laughs> and so I'm going around and, you know, I've read uh, Delaney's fiction about these kinds of public sex environments and I'm like, okay, you know, I kind of feel like I know what I'm supposed to do here. And so, you know, I try out some of these things like, you know, you walk by someone, you give them a little look down, a little look up like this, you know, and uh, see an invitation. Or you might walk by, give them a little brush on the hip to let them know that you're up for something. And, you know, surprise, it's all more or less working. And uh, I'm having a good time. And this place is packed because th the day of Folsom is their Black Friday. It's just filled with people. <laughs> Busiest day of the year. So there are all sorts of people there. Most of them are still in their fair fetish gear. But I noticed this guy at one point across the room from me. And he's wearing a button-down shirt, uh, you know, some kind of striped button-down shirt and khakis. And he's walking around looking very nervous. <laughs> and everyone's been so nice to me today that I decide, um, this guy looks like he could use a friend and I'll go up and talk to him. So I go over and I say, hey, is it your first time here too? And he looks at me and says, oh my god, is it that obvious? <laughs> and we get to talking and I learn that his name is Tom. And Tom is from out of town in Salt Lake City. And he's here with his partner and they're getting married the next day in San Jose. And Tom's partner had been to places like this many times, but Tom had never been and he wanted to see it at least once. And we got to talking and he starts pouring out all about how he's very nervous about getting married and, you know, things going on. Is it going to work out? And he's never been in a place like this. And, you know, I had never been to a place like this before, but I had been married for over 10 years. So I thought I could help him out a little bit. And so, you know, I gave him a little consolation, tried to be his friend there. And, you know, at one point he turns to me and he says, I'm so glad that I'm able to talk to you. It's like you're an angel from heaven who was sent down to talk to me today. And... I continued walking around the club that night and doing various things, and I would occasionally spot Tom, pass him you know, as I'm going by, and he would say, oh, look, it's my good friend Eric here. And at one point, even, he comes up to me and he says, oh, you'll never believe it. This guy that I never met let me put my hand on his penis. <laughs> he was so excited. <laughs> so I saw a lot of things there that night, and I've actually been back uh, quite a few times since then. And, um, and uh, unfortunately, I haven't ever heard from Tom again. And I hope that he's living his dream of a nice married life with his partner and that things are working out for them. Uh, but I realize that, uh, you know, my favorite author, Samuel Delaney, he was really right about one thing. It's that even in this odd environment, it's like where people are just having anonymous sex with each other, you can meet someone that you never would have expected to meet before and make a very brief but otherwise meaningful connection with them. And that was the perfect capstone for a day of many first times for me. So thanks very much.